Did you know that the Diocese of San Bernardino has a new bishop? Have you met him? Well, this is your chance. Wait. Welcome. Welcome to WordNet Productions. I'm Father Sony Sebastian, a Divine Word Missionary Priest. Today we are so excited, we are so happy because we have Bishop Alberto Rojas, the Bishop of San Bernardino with us. He comes from the Diocese of uh, Chicago with a lot of experience and uh, he has taken up the leadership position of this Diocese, San Bernardino Diocese supposed to be the second largest, geographically second largest diocese in the country. So we are so happy to have Bishop Alberto with us. Bishop, welcome. Welcome to WordNet Productions. I would like to ask you to share about your family and also your journey to the U.S. Uh, so also to let us know if you have still any family left in Mexico in uh, Aqua Calientes, Calientes. That's where you come from, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you, uh, first of all, for having me uh, for this kind invitation to introduce myself, I guess, and to share a little bit of what's going on. Sure. So far, it's been such a short time yet. Um, you know, for me to say that I know much of the diocese, I think I'm just the, at the beginning of everything. But I do still have family in Mexico. I'm uh, from Aguascalientes. It's a small little state uh, in the center of the country. Beautiful area. Mm, surrounded by mountains, uh, just like San Bernardino. <laughs> mm -hmm. And um, some of my family are in Mexico, some are in the United States. Um, this has been the story from a very long time. Uh, I think even before my father was married, he started coming to the United States in different ways. And so we do have a history with in both sides of the border. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Mm -hmm. Were you born here or were you born in Mexico? I was born in Mexico. Mexico. So at wa uh, wa when, when, did you, when did you come to the so US? So I was in the, seminar, in the seminary in Mexico all the way t until philosophy, completed philosophy uh, studies and finished my theology in Mandalay Seminary in mm -hmm. Chicago. Mm -hmm. um, so you started your priesthood formation in Mexico? Yes. And then you came to the US and mm -hmm. uh, continued in Mandalay mm -hmm. Seminary. Ah. So, were you, did you join for any of the dioceses in uh, Mexico or did you join to be part of any other religious order? I was always uh, in the diocesan seminary. Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, um, I suppose when I was in grammar school and the first times I was thinking of, um, you know, becoming a priest, uh -huh. it was, um, there was a connection between, this, with this, between the Jesuits and the school where I studied in a grammar school um, and I thought I was, I was going to go with the Jesuits, but um, their seminary was a little far away from my hometown, and my mom um, said that it was too far. <laughs> <laughs> so uh. the diocesan seminary was only 20, 35 minutes <laughs> away from the house. So, But I do remember the Jesuits because of the religious sisters who were running the school where uh -huh. I studied uh, grammar school um, were the sisters of the Company of Mary. And they had a nice, a close relationship with the Jesuits. And that's how I, I thought I was going to join the Jesuits. But um, I guess this wasn't God's will for me to join them. <laughs> but I do admire them. And, you know, there's... God has his plans, you know. <laughs> of course. <laughs> and we need to submit to that plan much more than anything mm -hmm. else. But uh, uh, why, when you came, you know, after, when you came to, to the U.S., why did you choose to choose Chicago Diocese instead of any other diocese? Chicago used to have a program uh, that was designed specifically for Hispanic vocations. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the main things at this program was to learn the language mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. a little bit of, the, you know, get familiar with the culture and um, a little bit of formation. There was just one year program. Mm -hmm. And that was like the introduction for you to then enter whatever level of the seminary mm -hmm. you, would, you would be. Mm -hmm. In my case, I, I was, after that year, I was able to enter the the Theologate, uh, the Mandalay Seminary for, for the Archdiocese of Chicago. Yeah. So you were ordained in Chicago and you became a priest 
and then uh, within how many uh, how many how many years did you serve as a priest before you were ordained as a bishop there? About fourteen, I think. Fourteen. Fourteen. Any That's any uh, were you surprised mm. or were you taken aback when you were requested <laughs> when you got the call from the nuncio? Very surprised I was. Um, I was so surprised that I said no. When I was asked to become an auxiliary of Chicago, <laughs> I thought they were joking. You know. I don't. I don't. Surpri I, I'm not surprised <laughs> by your answer. No. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> no, I'm just saying it's nothing you expect, you know, and it's nothing you believe you want to be. <laughs> uh, you don't prepare for that. You, you, there's no, no signs or uh, you know, not even an idea that I wanted to be a bishop at all. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to be a priest. Mm -hmm. uh, that I, I, I was looking for it, I was preparing for it. I, I believed God was calling me to be a priest. I didn't, never thought God was calling me to be a bishop. Mm -mm. And so when I got that call, I was a pastor of a parish. Yeah. And I enjoyed the, the, the pastoral ministry and the parish. That was like the best part. And then they asked, I get this phone call from the nuncio and I said, this, something is wrong with this. <laughs> you know, Maybe this, a wrong number. <laughs> I did say that. <laughs> I told him, you probably have a wrong number because, <laughs> you know, if you're the nuncio, you could be calling any parish, anybody in the United States. Mm -hmm. And what if you have a number <laughs> that is wrong or something? <laughs> and then he went on kind of describing who I was. You know, he knew a lot of details <laughs> of myself. So mm -hmm. I said to him, well, that sounds a lot like me. <laughs> um, but I still said, I didn't say yes at the moment. And I wanted, I thought, you know, what do you know about, you know, how pe bishops are ordained and how they are asked to be bishops? I thought that when, when somebody was going to be a bishop, they would tell him um, months in advance, right, for the person to prepare. But no, he said that I needed to respond yes or no at the moment on the phone. Oh, that was... I, ha I didn't have like even a few minutes to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> but I asked... Um, I asked if I could have, uh, I think it was a Friday, mm. and I asked him if I could call him on Monday, Monday. so I would have Saturday and Sunday. Monday. But even if I had those two days, it wasn't like that much of mm. time, and I was very busy at the parish with a lot of ministry, a lot of you know, weddings, uh, quinceañeras, all kinds of baptisms, there was confessions, and on Sunday we had six masses, uh -huh. um, and I think that's, that weekend I had four of the masses because the parochial vicar was mm. in vacation. So anyway, it was a little shocky mm -hmm. uh, to say the least, but he was a little reluctant to, to allow me to wait to respond. Mm. He's, he gave me a, number of, a few phone numbers to call, uh, to to call him back any time between Friday and, and, and Monday. Monday. <laughs> and of course, I didn't call in between, so I said I was going to call him on Monday morning. But... Um, about 45 minutes later, I got another phone call from, from the Cardinal, from Colonel George, uh -huh. uh, who was the Colonel yes, in Chicago, of Chicago at that time. And um, he said, don't say no. <laughs> 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 um, so I said to him, why well, I already did. Uh, I didn't say no exactly, but I didn't say yes. Mm -hmm. um, so he says, let's talk. Mm -hmm. And I said, and when? Mm -hmm. when, when can we talk? I'm, I'm very busy here at the parish. I don't know that I can go anywhere this weekend. But then he says, why don't you come for coffee, <laughs> you know, in my house? And he really meant it um, at 7 in the morning. So I was there. I mean, he could have called me at 3 in the morning. I wasn't going to sleep well yeah. anyway. <laughs> so I was there a little bit before 7, and it was so cute. One of the sisters opens the door and brings me into a, like, a living room. And there was this beautiful steamy cup of coffee on the table. I mean, I, he really meant it, you know, let, let's have coffee together. And then just a few minutes later, he, he shows up and begins to tell me that this is God's will and, you know, mm -hmm. all this. And of course, you know, I wasn't, um, at the moment, it's hard to, to believe it and you don't feel like you're prepared. Mm -hmm. You never prepare for that. And then he was so wonderful. Colonel George was such, a, such an amazing yeah. person. I met him. You I met him personally? Twice. Yeah, not exactly personally uh -huh. because he came once to ordain some of our priests in Chicago, you know, uh, to technique. 
and uh, those days I was a provincial, mm -hmm. so we greeted each other. And of course, I read him, I listened to him, a great man, of course. Yeah, yeah very, very bright, yeah. uh, such a holy man, yes. very simple at the same time. It's just a, a wonderful man. Yeah. I have very beautiful memories from Colonel George and uh, very uh, happy that I actually was ordained a priest and a bishop by him. Mm. Now, um, that, now you are a bishop. Do you see any difference between being a bishop and a priest? Because you said you are so happy as a priest, you wanted to continue as a priest. Do you find any difference? Oh yeah, there is a big difference. In, in, in many ways, it's the same because it's all for priesthood. the same purpose, right? It's still the priesthood. The priesthood. I'm not, yeah. um, uh, even though there were moments at the beginning when I felt like I was taken away from my priesthood mm. because it, it, it just become a very, kind of an administrative, you know, ministry. Yeah, yeah. And then you have to find ways to say, like I, I, many times I was trying to tell myself, all right, I've been in, in so many meetings this week um, that I don't feel like I've been in the parish at all. Yeah, you know, yeah. what happened to my ministry as a yeah. priest? So there's a, there's a distancing from the pastoral life that normally yeah, so a from priest the would enjoy. One, two, yeah, a lot, a lot of uh, distancing that way. And not intentionally, it's just because the, the nature of the ministry requires it. And then you have to find a way to canalize any, any, any ministry, any administrative mm -hmm. um, work that you do for the sake of the mission mm -hmm. uh, that every priest is doing at the parish level. Yeah. Uh, but I think for, for, um, for the purpose of the, of the priesthood, I think the parish is the place, this place yeah. you know, as a pastor. Yeah. And then of course, um, the, there are all these other ways for you to, to serve God and the people. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. this is one of the ways. Well, anyone in administration is also definitely doing a, probably a more responsible and an accountable mm -hmm. job because uh, well, you, we, are, we are doing a greater, probably a service to a larger church mm -hmm. rather than just being in a parish in a smaller local church, but it's a larger role. Church. And we something like to, that was yeah. what um, what Colonel George told me. Yeah, he says, "Well, you're going to be like a priest, but just in charge of uh, overseeing a, a, big, a bigger number of bigger parishes, number of parishes. not just yes. one." Yes. I said, "Okay, <laughs> <laughs> Bishop, we are yeah. going to take a short break, sure. and uh, after the break, of course, I want to uh, definitely discuss with you about uh, you know the San Bernardino Diocese and uh, how things are getting on here." Uh, so also with regard to what's going around in the in the wider church as well as you know in the society as well. So we're going to take a short break. Please stay with us. Do you want to fall in love with God? I'm sure we all want to. The Book of Psalms contains the directions. Thousands of years ago, people like you and me talked to God out of the depths of their hearts, revealing an intimate love. Psalms are the expression of the faith in God by people around 3,000 years ago. God was not a mere abstract creator, but was present, involved, and a real person of power and emotions. Now, when we read or listen to the Psalms, we can know the intensity of this love. Entering into the influence of the Psalms we can find a path to know and love God. To know more about the Psalms, you should get a copy of Father Mike Manning's booklet, The Psalms. It will help you to understand the 150 Psalms better as he has categorized them. He uses the technique of acts, adoration, contrition, thanksgiving, and supplication. Get your copy today and know the categories. Learn to pray with the Psalms. Call the number on the screen or email us. You can also get it through our website. Get your copy today. Welcome back. We are having a wonderful dialogue discussion with uh, Bishop Alberto Rojas, the Bishop of San Bernardino. And uh, in the last segment, you all heard about his uh, life as a, as a young boy in Mexico and uh, also as a seminarian in Mexico and then of course later on traveling to the U.S. and uh, becoming a priest in the Diocese of 
Chicago, and now as a bishop in Chicago, he again gets a surprise mm -hmm. information and call that he's going to be the bishop of San Bernardino. That was another big shock. That was another shock. Another big shock. Um, this time I couldn't, I didn't say no. Uh -huh. I just thought, because there were rumors already, you know, maybe within the prior two years mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, to the announcement that I was coming to San Bernardino. And a lot of people were already saying, oh, I think you're, th you're, you're going to be the new bishop of Tucson. You know, mm -hmm. you're going to be the new bishop of Gary. <laughs> you know, they were all, all, everybody made me a bishop of a diocese already. <laughs> and I said, well, I think I'm okay here. I think, you know, I have a lot to learn. I don't think I'm ready for something like that. But it was about s almost eight years as an auxiliary bishop in Chicago yeah. when this yeah. phone call yeah. came. It is so interesting. This was a little different because it was a different nuncio. Uh -huh. This nuncio called to me and and spoke to me all in Spanish, and it was so so unique. You know, he yeah, was yeah. he was the nuncio in Mexico for yeah. a good number of years, so his Spanish is very good, actually better than his English. Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> So he said to me in Spanish, um, how are you doing, you know? <laughs> um, and then he says, are you standing or are you seated? <laughs> and I'm like, what is this about? <laughs> you know, knowing that it is the nuncio, of course, you already begin to feel and, and know that, yeah. that, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm moving, I'm <laughs> leaving. I just wasn't sure where exactly where? I was going to go. Yeah. And honestly, I didn't know that San Bernardino was looking for a bishop because I thought Bishop Barnes still was here for some time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I, it was not in my, in my radar that I could, mm -hmm. you know, be a, a bishop in San Bernardino. I thought it was going to be somewhere, if I was to be an ordinary bishop, that it was probably going to happen in the, somewhere in the south side of the United yeah, States, mm -hmm. probably Texas. Or, mm -hmm. And... Um, well, it was California. <laughs> <laughs> but so uh, Bishop, when you, you know, Chicago being a bigger metropolitan uh, kind of a diocese and to coming to San Bernardino, uh, when you came here, uh, you know, were there, were, are there, or I don't want to say were there, are there any big surprises for you? You mean like comparing Compa my yeah, experience? I know it's not good to compare, but at the same time. Yeah. Um, um, there are surprises, but there are also a lot of similarities. Uh -huh. um, I think surprises in terms of the, I guess, the size of the diocese here. I, mm -hmm. I, when I first, um, you know, heard of me coming here, I didn't even know what was the size of San Bernardino. I thought it was a small little diocese. You never, Second largest You never diocese. heard of, <laughs> you hardly heard of San Bernardino anywhere. <laughs> and so I didn't even know how large it was. It was until after the, the uh, the call of the nuncio, and I started to like, uh, you know, check what is where is San Bernardino, mm -hmm. and what is this about, that I realized it was like wow. All the way to Barstow, all the way to it, it is very I large. Mean, uh, you know, uh, Arizona. Not only geographically, which is already very large, but also in terms of the number of Catholics. Number of Catholics. I, it's almost one like one point seven yeah. million. What are the challenges and the beautiful things that you think are in the diocese? Um, is I enjoy the driving around and going to the parishes every Sunday and trying to be in a different parish. I, I think I almost visited all the parishes. I may have just a very few left to complete the cycle. Mm. And um, it's different um, because uh, the Archdiocese of Chicago is, is larger in number of Catholics, but it's smaller. In, in, the, in the territory. And this is um, surprisingly big in not only uh, territory wise, but also with the number of Catholics, but also very beautiful in terms of the diversity. And that is something similar. Uh, Chicago has also uh, a huge variety of people. And um, well, probably about half of the Hispanics in Chicago are, ca are um, I mean, half of the, the yeah. Catholics are Hispanic. And here is more. Yeah. Uh, there's, a, there's a difference here. It's more like 70%. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And, and it's, um, you know, understandable. You were saying that the diocese has grown um, pretty quickly in yes. the last few years yes. because of people moving from other areas of the state where they cannot afford it and they can come here and this is a little better. And, and yes, that's what I heard also from um, a, a lot of people that uh, Bishop Barnes, for example, said in the last 10 years, the diocese has grown probably double the size. Mm -hmm. um, in numbers. 
and that, that presents, of course, um, a challenge, a blessing, but a challenge as well. And, and I think a challenge is already um, because of the number of priests that we have. Um, we, we need more vocations. You know, we need vocations. We need more yeah. vocations. Yeah. I think we need also, it, this is another thing that is very different from Chicago. Chicago right now is going through a process of consolidating and combining parishes in closing mm -hmm. parishes, and we need more parishes here. We need to build parishes. We need to build, yeah. We need to build. We are growing. You know, so. We are growing. Yeah. We're growing. Yeah. Yeah. And so as the population, you know, continues to grow, we need to do something about it um, with the vocations. Yeah. Well, uh, what are your dreams and aspirations for the diocese? Wow. <laughs> I can say I can have a lot of dreams and, uh, and you know, aspirations, but I, I think I first need to learn better. Um, what I have been doing this last few months, um, basically since I came, is to get to know more of the diocese. A lot of listening, I feel like it's very important. Mm -hmm. um, I have to keep my ears and my heart open, wide, um, to every, every, every area and every aspect and every people. Um, and once I, had a better, once I get a better knowledge of the diocese, I think I can say maybe this is what we need. But before you know better it's, it's not easy to come up with you know how would you prepare something yeah, 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 for yeah. for something you don't know exactly, yeah. uh, totally and and of course i don't know you know in order to get to know more of the diet it'll take years it'll take years um so i, I think right now i just want to immerse mm -hmm, mm -hmm. fully myself uh, obviously the pandemic was a big block in the way um so in, in some ways it was frustrating not to get to know more of the diocese, not, not being more involved because of the pandemic. But there is also some positive things about the pandemic, even though um, we are so sorry for all the people who have died and how it has affected yeah. us all yeah. in many different ways. But uh, there, there is also some good things that, that we can learn from the pandemic. Um, what are your hobbies? What do you do <laughs> in your, uh, I know you don't have that much of spare time, but what do you do with in your spare time? I like music. Uh -huh. music. I know you sing. Music is one of the uh, things that has been always in the family. My mom used to play guitar and you know, there was always singing in the family for on all kinds of reunions. And I have a brother who you know, has dedicated more seriously to music. He's written a lot of songs. He has recorded a few albums. and. Ah. He's not he's not famous or popular. He never really went that serious. But um, I think he, what he did was a lot. And all of us got a little bit of the music. So I enjoy music. I, it's very relaxing. Music is also almost like a remedy in many ways. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, it's healing. It's healing. Mm -hmm. It really is. Yes. And so, um, so I do that sometimes when I, when I can. And now and then, if I have a chance, I can go to a concert. Uh -huh which is also uh, good to do. Um, I like sports. I don't play a lot lately, but I used to like uh, to play basketball. Uh -huh. um, a Me lot. too. Yeah, In the good. seminary. <laughs> seminary days. Yeah. And wrecked my playing. fingers, also my knee. Oh, <laughs> no. I was playing <laughs> basketball even after as a priest. And uh -huh. even as a bishop, I played a, a few times uh -huh. with uh, seminarians at the seminary in Madeleine. Lately, I haven't done it in the last uh, two or three years. but. Um, I like the mountains. I, I like walking up. And you can climb the I Blue Mountain right I where you live. I already did. Oh, you did? I really oh, did. <laughs> I did once there. Yeah, it's a beautiful yeah, area. It's a beautiful area. Especially when it's green. Yes, yes, yes. Which is also kind of an interesting thing. Watch out for the burrows. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I was going to say, um, this is the time when in most places everything is so dry. And here, it's green. Is the other way. <laughs> it's the opposite. This is when the green. Yes. Uh, the Green Mountains, you, you know, yeah. happened and over the summer well, when you for expect, short time, <laughs> for <laughs> a short time, <laughs> and over the summer where you know everybody, everywhere else is green and beautiful, here is very dry, dry and yeah. Well, uh, one last question: What is your favorite devotion? Devotion. Mm. Well, I have a lot of devotions. Uh, one, of course, is to the Blessed Mother. Um, something I've had from the very early years we of my life. We share that uh, commonly. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think uh, I, I have to thank my mother for that because she had a very strong devotion to Our Lady and also to the Sacred Heart. Is it the rosary? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. I said, you know, simple 
many times uh, people say is boring, <laughs> but when you when you really focus on exactly. the mysteries that you are reflecting upon the rosary, it's actually very profound. I think repetitive prayer is very really important. Yes, it's like a mantra. You know, your yes, it's like a your mantra. heart yes. gets into it, and um, it really connects you. And plus, the mysteries are not anything simple. No. This is this is really profound. Yes, yes. And um, even if the rosary is not mentioned in the Bible, the Bible is mentioned in the rosary, the rosary. All, all over yes, the place. Yes, yes. <laughs> all over the place. <laughs> so it is a beautiful prayer. I think it's uh, it's great to to keep it as a as a practice for 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 everybody, for the family especially. But Thank I you. like that um, because it's been something you can say, or I can say, maybe some of the very beginning or initial prayers. Uh, through which I communicate with God. No. And Thank you. Thanks for sharing that with us. I'm sure our audience will be happy mm -hmm. to listen to that. Yeah. Well, we are going to conclude. As I requested you at the beginning itself, if you can say a short prayer and bless all our audiences. We have a camera right there. Just look at that camera. Right there. <laughs> look at Where that camera. <laughs> <laughs> look at that camera and uh, say a short prayer and give a blessing for, for all sure. our audience, please. Yeah, well, thank you for the invitation. I know um, we all have our times a little bit uh, <laughs> I know. constrained, but um, it's good to give some time to, we're talking about the media and how important it is to, to use it. I think we have to get more used to using the media for our uh, purposes of evangelization, for sure. Very good. I'll give you thanks, Almighty God, for the gift of our lives one more day. Thank you for the gift of Jesus in the Eucharist and also in one another. I ask you to continue assist us, assisting us with um, the presence of the Holy Spirit, um, that, we need, that we keep that light, that wisdom, that strength that, w that the Holy Spirit can give us so that we continue to be your missionary disciples, uh, witnesses of God's love uh, in the world. I ask also the intercession of the Blessed Mother um, and St. Mergadine, our patron saints for this diocese, to continue to intercede before the Lord uh, for our needs. Amen. And I ask um, the Lord to send his blessing upon all of you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank, Thank you, you, Bishop. Thank you so much for coming to Ordinate, spending a few minutes with us, so also sharing your personal as well as your dreams and aspirations for the diocese. As you, as you said, immerse into this ministry, this new, new mission that has been entrusted to you. And thank you so much. I hope you all have enjoyed listening to Bishop Alberto uh, and have been blessed, I'm so sure. Again, be always with us, support us, and uh, definitely subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to click on that bell icon. Blessings always and keep well. Thank you. Thank you.